This is a message specifically for anyone who has recently received a diagnosis of a condition or disease such as cancer to help you to understand what is happening in your body and to hopefully ease any fears you may have. If someone has shared this video or gifted it to you, you are very fortunate that someone who cares for you very much is aware of the rare information that I'm going to share and they would like to help you if you would like to know more. This is a gift of purest love and intention so you can discover that your condition or disease is recoverable no matter what you've been told. I personally had my own journey after discovering a large lump almost 10 years ago. I was very afraid and felt that life was so unfair. I understand that you may also feel like this at the moment. I also felt overwhelmed by people with good intentions who wanted to give me information to help me. But in the state of mind that I was in at the time, I felt like I couldn't take anything in. So with this in mind, I have kept this as simple as possible and only focused on the things that I truly wish I knew back then. As I would have not only saved myself a lot of physical and emotional suffering, but also saved my loved ones a lot of upset. This is based upon a new discovery of biological laws that provide us with the deepest understanding of anatomy, physiology and biology to date that is yet to be known and accepted by the medical industry. This is because they still use the same protocols that were devised in the 1930s due to their slow uptake of new research and discoveries and also due to an outdated law called the Cancer Act of 1939 that prohibits them changing the treatments that are offered. A German cancer doctor called Dr. Hammer made this new discovery in the late 70s and continued with many years of meticulous scientific research involving over 40,000 cases. Most of his patients were classed as terminal, but he still achieved a success rate of over 92% full recovery, which was confirmed in a court of law and is on public record. His discovery confirms that disease is not a malfunction and it is not rogue or mutated cells, as most people think. But it is simply the body responding appropriately to a recent shock or trauma that has been experienced. It also states that our body has amazing inbuilt healing capabilities which you can actually observe every day. Think of cuts, injuries and even fractures. Our bodies heal bones all by themselves. It is only the doctor's job to provide support once the bone is held in the correct position. In the same way, our body can heal any other organ. The reason we have lost touch with this is because treatments prevent the natural process from happening, which is why diseases often return or become chronic. Here is an image which shows the two phases of a disease. The first phase is called the conflict active phase. It is when we are responding to a shock or trauma. We are in a state of increased stress, which is sometimes called fight or flight. 
The second phase is called the healing phase. It is when we are recovering from the trauma because the danger or shock is resolved and no longer relevant. So we feel relieved, tired, and this is when we feel symptoms. It is sometimes called rest and digest. In these two phases, there is a period of cell growth and cell loss or removal. And this applies to something as simple as a cold, as well as something like cancer. Shown in blue, if the body thinks it needs to strengthen an organ to help you cope with the shock or trauma, then it will cause extra cells to grow on that organ in the conflict active phase. And these will be removed in the healing and recovery phase. Shown in purple, if the body thinks that widening a vessel or duct will help the situation, it will erode the cells and these will be replaced in the recovery phase. So in these cases, the cell growth would be in the second phase. Any cell growth where the cells are dividing above a certain rate is called cancer by the medical professionals. But this rate just confirms how intense the shock or trauma was. By this mainstream definition, a bone or injury healing or even a pregnancy which also follows this natural healing process, could be diagnosed as cancer. So during the timeline of the disease, depending on the tissue involved, diagnosis at the two points shown would be called cancer if the cell growth was above a certain rate. But in reality, cell growth is just a part of the larger picture of this natural process. The reason it is not widely known is that the doctors do not realize this, as they are taught to go in and fight it to stop the process. Therefore, most have not seen this self-healing occur, or even if they do, they call it a spontaneous healing. These natural processes happen often without us even knowing. Several pathologists who perform autopsies have confirmed that they often find people with multiple tumors of varying stages that are not on their medical records. This confirms that we have these diseases that cause cell growth many times without knowing about them, as our body just removes the cells and heals itself, or encapsulates the tumour so we can carry on with life. There are also natural processes that include cell growth that are not often found, as we deem the symptoms as a common ailment that we can recover from. And therefore, these things are not usually subject to invasive diagnostic procedures. A common issue, such as diarrhea, may be thought of as an upset tummy. But this cell growth and removal process has actually happened without you knowing. If it was a lot more intense, then you may go to the doctors and be diagnosed with bowel cancer. But this too would recover itself as long as the conflict is resolved, just as it does with an upset tummy. Some of the language used by oncologists and doctors can be scary, so I'll look at what they actually mean with all this in mind as a basis. One of the most scary beliefs is the idea that cancer can spread known as metastasis. But did you know that metastasis is what's known as a hypothesis? 
A hypothesis is an unproven theory that is accepted despite being unproven. This new scientific discovery shows how the spreading of cancer is scientifically not possible due to the true development and function of the cells involved. What medical professionals believe to be spreading is actually separate incidents of shock, which can be caused by the shock of diagnosis, or the original trauma may have caused multiple shocks to occur. Each incident is a separate, isolated shock, but it is assumed to be spreading. Think about it. If cancer travels in the blood, they would have to routinely screen blood transfusions for cancer, and they would need to give people thorough cancer screening before allowing them to give blood in case they had cancer without knowing. But they don't. It also does not make sense that cancer travels in the lymph as some parts of our body that are often subject to secondary cancers are not served by the lymphatic system. So again, it is just an assumption made that it is the same cancer found in other areas. Another scary sounding term is aggressive. This is when the cell growth is above a certain rate and this depends on the intensity of the original shock and at which phase of the disease you are in. They have simply caught the diagnosis at the point of the greatest cell growth, like this. Another term they may use is rare. Now this can sound scary, but they term something rare if it is something they don't often find, not necessarily something that doesn't occur very often. An example is pleural mesothelioma, which is a thickening of the pleura. And if the cells are in the growth phase, it is known as a rare form of lung cancer. This is basically the first phase of pleurisy. And as there are no symptoms in this phase, people would not usually go to the doctors, so they would rarely investigate and find the cell growth causing the thickening. As pleurisy is a known and fairly common ailment, there would not be any need for further tests, and therefore this thickening is rarely found, leading them to believe it is a rare cancer. The doctors do not understand that it is part of a larger process that will just become pleurisy. They only see it at that one point in time and assume that it will stay that way or grow out of control if they don't fight it. Another term is terminal. This means to them it is just a matter of time and there is nothing more they can do but offer palliative care which is something that will ease suffering. Something to consider here is that the university training of oncologists and doctors is heavily funded and influenced by pharmaceutical companies and they receive very little training in other things like nutrition and are taught that other modalities are not effective. Therefore, there is only one path for them and that is their path. It is not their fault, they want to help, but they are trained to believe that there is no other way. As a result, many will dismiss and even ridicule other approaches. Even if they thought something else can help, the Cancer Act I mentioned forbids them to tell you, and that is something I want you to understand. So if they say there is nothing more they can do, it is exactly that. There is nothing more they can do. There are so many other approaches. If you went to a chiropractor for a bad back and they told you they have tried everything and there's nothing more they can do, you would not give up, would you? You would try another therapy, such as massage or osteopathy. 
And this is exactly the same. I really hope that this has helped you to see how these terms can sound very scary. But with this new understanding, they are simply explained. Regarding treatments, most medications and treatments, such as chemotherapy, are highly stimulating and often they appear to pause the disease or stop the symptoms. This is interpreted as a cure, but with this new understanding, it is preventing the natural process from continuing and completing. Oftentimes, the body still has more recovering to do, and this is why the disease can recur at a later date in order to complete the process. Some cancers are what they term unresponsive to treatment. This can happen when there is cell growth in the first phase and having a stimulating treatment in that particular phase will not slow down what is happening. And in some cases, it can make it worse. Medical professionals do not understand why some things work and some things don't on different diseases. But they would if they knew the two-phase nature of disease. To prevent any recurrence and ensure a full recovery, with all this in mind, it is considered preferable to allow the natural process to happen and complete by supporting your body rather than fighting it so it follows the process as it is meant to. You can do this by learning more about it to gain a better understanding as you will begin to realize a lot of this for yourself. For me personally, learning this gave me a lot of hope and removed a lot of my fear, and this allowed me to heal. I understand that it may seem scary to take a different route to what the medical professionals say, and you may wish to continue your treatment, and it is no one's intention to persuade you otherwise. I just wanted to make you aware of this information so you can make an informed choice, as it is very unlikely you will have come across this before. There are many things you can do to help support your body's natural process that won't interfere with anything else and help with any side effects. Above all, your mindset is the key to your healing. So, whichever path you decide to take, approach your healing and body with love and gratitude and reduce your fear and stress as much as possible. I know it is probably a lot to take in, but I really hope some of this resonates with you and you will ask the person who shared or gifted this to you to tell you more. Thank you for watching. I send you much love and blessings on your journey to recovery.